Hey, what's up? I've got some more lore content for you guys. I wanted to switch gears for this one and really focus on the new players trying to get into Legends of Runeterra. If you are a new player and don't know where to begin, feeling overwhelmed by all of the menus, or you want some quick tips to get a jump start on other new players, then this video is for you. Hello, my name is Tempo. I've hit Master Tier every season since the beta, even peaking rank 1 in the Americas region. And I will be your guide to this wonderful card game called Legends of Runeterra. So I made a new account and tried out the new player experience again for the first time in about 10 months. There have been quite a few changes since that video, so I wanted to cover all the new stuff and share some great tips to help you get into the game. With that, let's talk about the first thing you'll see when starting lore, and that is the tutorial. So all things considered, I think this is a very good tutorial, especially compared to other games. I think it teaches you the fundamentals and what you need to do in order to play out each and every match very, very well. The one complaint I have with the tutorial is that some of the cards don't exist, and actually most of the cards don't do what they actually say in the tutorial that they do. So as long as you don't pay attention too much to the card's stats or effects, and just play through the basic mechanics, this will be okay and you won't have any problem translating your knowledge as soon as you get into the actual game. While on the topic of the tutorial, I'd like to take a moment and explain the three biggest mechanics in the game to help you understand the flow of a match if you're just getting into it. So, Legends of Terra is very unique in the way that during each turn, both players are able to act, play units, and cast spells. One player does an action, the other player is able to do an action as well, and it goes back and forth until both players decide to pass. The second mechanic I want to talk about is attack order. Only one player is able to attack during each turn while the other one is on defense. What's cool about lore is that much like in Magic the Gathering, the defender is able to determine block targets, which makes the game innately defense favored. But what really shakes things up though, is the spells in the game, which is the third and final mechanic that I want to briefly cover. Spells have four speeds, slow, fast, focus, and burst. Slow spells are considered slow because they can't be used in combat. Fast spells can be used in combat, but enemies can react to them and play their own spells to negate or stop said fast spells. Focus speed spells can't be reacted to, but they also can't be used in combat. While burst speed spells are the best of the bunch, and they have no interaction, and it just works. You can also do it during combat. The coolest side mechanic in the game in my opinion is the ability to bank spell mana. This is also called floating mana. All you have to do is end a turn with mana remaining, and it will be banked for a future turn. This allows you to do cool things like play an 8 cost spell on turn 5 because you spend your 5 mana for the turn, plus 3 banked spell mana. After the basic tutorial, you are shown this menu, which I think is really cool. It gives you an option to play the Path of Champions PvE game mode in order to learn the game even more, or jump straight into the PvP side of things and start deck building and challenges and doing that. So let's briefly talk about Path of Champions. Path of Champions is a PvE game mode where you play against the AI using a partially pre-constructed deck and adding cards and powers to it. You then progress across a line of battles and events in order to get to the end and fight the boss. This is a great game mode to play and learn the game in a non-pressure environment. You don't have to be afraid of losing and you can really focus on the learning aspect. The only thing to keep in mind is much like the tutorial, a lot of cards and of course the powers are not in the PvP version of the game, but it's a fun way to pass the time and you can even complete daily and event missions in the Path of Champions. So I want to take a quick minute to go through all the menus, get familiar with the HUD because I know as a new player to some games, especially mobile games, there's a lot of menus, a lot of things to click through, but I want to make it as easy and digestible as possible so you can get into the game and start mid-maxing your resources. So we'll start at the top here. This is your player icon. You can go ahead and change this if you just click on it. There's a cool like set of basic icons that you can pick through. I like Shadow Isle, so I'm going to go ahead and pick that. You know, spiders looking kind of cool as well. I played a couple spider games. Maybe I like the spiders, so we'll pick one of those and call it a day. Then there's also your profile, how many cards you collected, card backs, stuff like that. You can see your collection of each of the expansions and your mastery for each champions. Yeah, it's pretty cool. There's actually uh, mastery points so you can feel good about maining a, a singular champion or a deck. After that, we have the currencies on the top here. This is basically riot points, these coins. The green shards are 
in-game currency used to craft certain cards. More on that later when we get into the crafting menu. And this red ruby looking uh, currency is how you make prismatic cards, which are basically like hollow cards in other games, right? So you just make them shiny. Then at the top right here, this is a really important uh, menu. It doesn't even look like it's a clickable button sometimes, but it's important to check on here and click through these. This is the like news menu, I guess. Sometimes it'll tell you the new expansion, what's going on. There's an event calendar as well. So you know, you know, as a player, when things are going to happen. So that's super important. We got patch notes right here. And then also, hey, Twitch Prime rewards, very cool. So after that, this is the most important menu in the entire game. I'm not kidding, right up here, these are your missions. So as a new player, you're gonna wanna check these often and slam through the missions to get your XP. That's what this little symbol indicates over here. This is your XP. You want to be mid-maxing these as much as possible. And then after that, we have the friend menu and we have settings. You can play with settings, of course, video, audio, that kind of stuff. And then we can put that away. So again, this is the main menu. We have login rewards. I highly recommend logging in every day, even if you don't have time to play a game. For your first seven days, go ahead and grab your login bonus. You'll get a variety of different cards, different rarities. We got some commons and some rares right here, as uh, indicated by the color on the gem on the bottom of each card. Very good, especially that avalanche. That's a great card. So, yeah. After the seven day login bonus, there are no more login missions. So don't feel like you're gonna get too far behind or anything like that. As long as you claim each of your first seven days, log on, grab it real quick, you'll be good to go. And you are met with an Ash deck, which is really good for new players at the end of the seven day login bonus. After that, we have loot down here on the bottom. This is, let's see, collect the Path of Champions event rewards. Very cool. Thanks for playing. We got some Hextech handlers for our Heimerdinger deck. Very nice. And we also get a profile icon for playing during this. Sometimes the loot will just pop up here and there. Make sure to go to the home menu and collect it. Sometimes it's cosmetic. Sometimes it's profile icons, just like that one. And then we have uh, Path of Champions, how to get back to it very quickly. And then the very bottom right, this is also super important. This is your weekly vault. So Lux is going to go ahead and tell us what's going on here. Every game improves your vault. The better your vault, the better your weekly rewards. All right, she's not telling us the whole story. So basically how the vault works is while you're doing missions, you're getting these little points over here on the right. And these are adding to your vault over the course of the week. Every Thursday, the vault will open and your vault will be as good as the amount of XP from games and from missions that you did. So we're going to go ahead and grab our chest. Two of our bronze chests automatically upgraded to silver. So basically when this happens at all, it means one of your rewards got automatically upgraded to a better version of the same reward. So we got some chests here. Go ahead and collect some common and rare cards. Very good to start building a collection. Oh, we got some good stuff in here. Shards are also really nice because they're just a global resource. All right, and then after that, we have the uh, play menu. In play, we have challenges. Hello again, Lux. Challenges are a series of trials that will teach you about different cards. Try your best, I know you can do it. So the challenges are basically uh, more tutorials. You get 100 XP for playing through each one. I know there's a lot and it's probably going to be a slog, but I highly recommend getting on and playing like two or three of these a day at the very least. That way you get through them all. You might be able to learn some decks that you like because every time a new expansion comes out, there are new tutorials to help explain the keywords and mechanics that are being added to the game so highly recommend checking this out often and getting through them um, in your own pace so after the play menu we have the collection this is where all of your decks and cards are going to be this is where you can view your pvp decks cards and cosmetics thank you lux so we can go ahead and see our default decks we have buff and tough death and spiders heals and shields spells and stealth as you play through the beginning you will also unlock more decks uh, that are tied to your missions we can also see separate cards in this menu. So we can scroll through, see what champions we start with, see what other cards we start with. Uh, you can also filter by region, which is really nice. And up here, you can filter by all cards, owned and incomplete. So all cards will show you every single card in the game, even if you don't have it unlocked. Owned is, of course, uh, only cards that you do have. And incomplete will show you uh, a mix of both. We also have this menu up here that lets you filter card types, unit spells, landmarks, rarities, common rare epic champion, and mana costs, and even by set. There's a lot of cool stuff in here that you can help filter uh, specific cards that you're looking for. Then after this menu, we have skins. This is where you can see purchasable skins uh, in the shop. 
These are usually, you know, you have to pay with the uh, this game's version of Riot Points. So you can go ahead and buy those there and shell out on some of these skins. Some of the skins have different level up animations, particle effects, things like that. So they're really, really cool. I actually really like the way they're doing skins in Legends of Runeterra. Over here is more of the shop. You can buy different boards to play on. So different cosmetic options. Guardians are also cosmetic options. You get a Poro for free when you start and start playing through some of the missions, but there's other ones as well. Cardbacks, more cosmetic options. Uh, emotes, also more cosmetic options. So as you can see, Legends of Terra is a free-to-play game, but has a lot of cosmetics to help personalize your board and the way you want your stuff to look. And then the last menu you're going to see as a new player is the rewards menu. This is really, really important. This is called the PvP Introduction Road, okay? So as you play missions and as you play games, you'll go across this road. The XP goes to this little bar down here and you go across. So the first thing you're going to get is a Poro after your uh, basic decks from the tutorial. And then Capsule, which gives you cards and shards. Another deck, uh, more cards and shards, prismatic rewards more deck. There's the PvP. So once you play through enough games to get this far on the uh, event road, then you're able to play PvP against other people. Then you get more decks and then you also get to unlock region roads. Okay, so I hopped on another account that has region roads unlocked along with the event menu so I can explain what else there is to show. So after you finish the prologue route, you are met with region roads for each of the different regions in Runeterra. So right now I have Ionia activated and there are region roads for each of the other regions as well. As you can see, Bandle, Bilgewater, Demacia, Freljord, Noxus, Shadow Isles, Piltover, Zahn, Shurima, and Targon. So basically how this works is you select any region. Like let's say we're going to select Noxus right now. Activate. This puts us on this road to unlock Noxus themed cards. So like let's say I really want to build a Noxus deck. You, I want to go into this road and then start playing games and doing missions. The, those missions will not only add to the weekly vault, as I explained before, but will also add to this road, allowing you to unlock cards along this route. Now, the only thing that's really happening on this region reward route is you're getting rewards themed around Noxus. It doesn't matter what deck you play, you don't have to go play Noxus decks to like make this work or anything. You can play whatever you want and unlock Noxus cards. So it's really, really cool. You can do this for any of the regions that you want to build uh, a deck for or find champions in. So a little bonus side note is that the regions will have a green bar on the bottom. This means you will be on the boosted XP version of that route. So basically, if you play missions and you get games in, you will unlock these region rewards even faster than normal. So for example, let's say Bandle City does not have a green route. As you can see, it has no green aura on the bottom. That means you're not going to get any boosted XP. You're not going to get the rewards faster. But if you're on Noxus, Demacia, Bilge, any of these that have the green route, then you will be able to get those at a quicker pace. So one of my general tips is if you want a variety of cards from each of the different regions, it's highly recommended to play through the boosted XP route of each of the regions. That way you get a versatile amount of cards and can build a variety of decks. Another tip that I'd like to share is if you really want to focus on the champions of each of the regions, because those are the hardest cards to get, you should play up to the 8th region reward in each of the regions to get the champion capsule. This will be at the 8th spot on every single region, so that's also highly advisable if you want to get a variety of champions and build your decks that way. The next menu I'd like to talk about is the event menu. This is basically Legends of Runeterra's version of a battle pass. So you can go ahead and play games and you'll automatically go across the route. You'll collect the free stuff as indicated by all the rewards that say free. However, if you upgrade to premium, so you buy the event pass, you'll get all the premium rewards as well. This often includes cards, cosmetics like emotes and card backs and stuff like that and also prismatic variations of cards, sometimes exclusive skins. So way down in this event pass, you can get exclusive, where are they at? Exclusive skins for Soraka and for Quinn, the very end. You can't get these anyway else, it's only through the event pass, so it's pretty important. I think overall the event pass is super worth it, there's tons of great cosmetics each time. I've never felt bad about buying and completing an event pass in Legends of Runeterra. The next menu I'd like to talk about is the store. Sometimes there are free options in the store as well, so it's important to check often. You can sometimes grab free cosmetics, but right now there's a bundle for the skins, uh, there's pre-built decks that you can buy, usually not recommended because you can usually craft the cards 
yourself. But if you want uh, a deck very quickly, then you can pay for it, uh, the event pass, and other things like that. Alright, the last menu I want to talk about is the crafting menu, as I think this is very important for deck building. So let's go ahead and click on new deck. So when you got new deck, you usually like to filter the regions or, you know, click on the champions you want to play. So like, let's say, for example, I want to build my own version of spiders. Spiders are in Shadow Wilds and in Noxus. You can also figure that out by typing spider in the search bar and that will filter to all the spider cards. So since spiders are Noxus and Shadow Walls, I'll go ahead and put those in. And then we have a bunch of different things we can do here. So I'm missing my third Elise as indicated by these little blips underneath the cards, right? This means I have two cards of this kind already in the deck and we have an empty blip, meaning we don't actually have a third copy of Elise. Over here we have an empty blip and two um, completely empty ones, right? This one is not filled, this one they don't exist, so that means we have one crawling sensation and that's it. If we want to add or create more of these cards, we're going to have to right click them, and that allows us to sh uh, show the crafting menu. So on the crafting menu is going to show you a couple different things. This says you can craft it with 10 uh, RP, so paid for currency, 100 shards, or one of this green card. So the green card up here is called a wild card. There's a wild card type for each of the rarities, common, rare, epic, and champion. Uh, you can also globally craft any of these kind of cards with shards. So that's basically how to break down these two currencies. In general, what I would recommend is just go ahead and use your wild cards in order to craft uh, all the staples. You want to go through your wild cards first, okay? So we use one wild card and get our arachnoid sentry, then we're able to add three copies of that into our deck. Since champions and even epics are very hard to come by to get their wild cards, I highly recommend using shards on those to fill them out. Primarily champions, okay? You want to use your shards on champions. Don't spend your shards on commons and rares. It's pretty easy to get common and rare wild cards through missions and your weekly vault. So don't use the premium global currency on those. Make sure we reserve these shards for champions and sometimes epics. Because again, champion and epic wild cards can be very hard to come by, especially as a new player. And then down here we can also choose to Prismatic the Elise if we want to make the card shiny. We would need 700 of these rubies, which we don't have enough, but we can go ahead and shiny, you know, other kinds of cards. And from this menu we can also purchase uh, skins for the champion outright, so we don't have to go through the shop menu, it's all right here for us. Then we can go ahead and save the deck and it will be put into our collection. If it has a red exclamation mark, that means it can't be played, you're missing some cards, and stuff like that. Another important thing to keep in mind is how to import decks. I think this is really, really important as a new player especially. So if you find a deck that you like on YouTube or you find it on a website somewhere, you copy the entire code uh, onto your clipboard. So basically you just control C or right click copy and then go into the client and hit import deck and it will pull it in for you. Another cool thing you can do is go to play and go to leaderboard and check what the top players are doing. If you hit inspect and click on import deck you can also name it so this looks like bard we'll put bard here import deck that should put it directly into your collection so that's a fun little thing if you want to see what some of the top players are doing you can import the deck directly into your collection and start building and start working with because then you can right click go through your shards go through your wild cards pop 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 and you can start building decks that way so very very cool two other quick pvp menus that i want to quickly cover is gauntlet gauntlet is an alternate game mode so you can build and bring three decks and you play a tournament style 1v1 with your opponent. You bring three decks, your opponent brings three decks, you each ban one, and then you play a best of three. Super, super fun. If you play through a bunch of gauntlets and get a bunch of prime glories, you can be eligible to play in the season tournament at the end of each season. Speaking of which, the season tournament is an in-client hosted tournament by Riot themselves where the top 700 master tier players and 324 players that qualify through Gauntlet get to compete against each other for uh, cash prizes and also cosmetics. Really, really cool. It's one of the only games I've seen that have an in-client tournament. It's a lot of fun to play in. And then there's also labs. Sometimes labs rotate in and out. These are fun game modes that you can play by yourself or sometimes with a teammate. And for some quick tips to round out the video, Legends of Runeterra rewards you for playing daily rather than an extended period of time each day. So if possible, it's better to play a few games every day as opposed to several hours in a single day. That way you can get a little bit of your bonus XP in and get your missions done. Speaking of daily missions, you can bank up to three at a time and if you don't like one, you can also re-roll them 
with this option right here and you get one reroll each and every day. So like let's say you really don't like this one, you can reroll it and get one that is more preferred. There's also a great resource on the Legends Are in Terra subreddit, which is a new player's guide that I will put a link to in the description below. It has fantastic resources in order to learn and play the game. With that, I hope I did a great job covering the basics of Legends Are in Terra, how to navigate the menus, and even some tips in order to build your collection faster and more efficiently than other new players. And that's it for this one. Please like and subscribe if you thought this video was informative or entertaining. It really helps me out. I'll be releasing more deck profiles, guides, and gameplay highlights in the near future. Thank you so much for watching and have a good one. Laters!